Okay, good morning everyone, or afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. I'm Daniel Adar, I'm uh, chairing this session, and uh, we'll have a series of uh, four 20-minute uh, talks, 15 minutes plus five minutes of questions. And our first speaker uh, is uh, Micah Dreeb Shun on parity, quantum optimization, encoding constraints. Yes. Thanks for the introduction. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Now? Perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, first, uh, thanks for the possibility to do, give a talk here at the AQC in Trieste. Um, I will present a work about how to encode optimizations problems which are uh, constraints. And, um, Therefore, I will give a short overview about the talk. Um, we are interested in constraint optimization problems, so namely optimization problems with polynomial equality constraints. Um, and we want to find an encoding which encodes both the optimization problem together with the constraint um, in an easy implementable way, so for current hardware devices, digital and analog. Uh, therefore, I start with the LHZ model, on which is our approach based on. So we consider an Ising spin encoding of this form here with two-body interaction and local fields. And we co um, consider all-to-all -all connected problems. So for this example, we have a six-qubit example. And first of all, I will co uh, focus only on um, problems without local fields, where every product of logical spins here or logical qubits transforms to a single parity qubit and it's called parity qubit because it represents the parity of the logical products here. So for example, if both are up or down, we get a plus one and if they are of opposite direction, we get a minus one. And um, if we consider now the number of parity qubits we get with this, with this method, um, we see that it's much larger than um, the original problem and the degrees of freedom. And this means we have to reduce our degrees of freedom. And this do we with parity constraints. So we have to find a certain number of constraints. This can be calculated by the number here of parity qubits minus the number of the logical qubits plus the degeneracy of our graph. So for example, here we have a global spin flip degeneracy, so gives a one. And um, how we find these uh, 10 particular constraints here, we search for all closed loops in the logical graph and we take out 10 of them uh, such that all edges are covered. And um, if we have a closer look on uh, one of these closed loops, we see that every closed loop includes an even number or zero number of logical qubits. And this means the product out of it gives always one. And this is what we use to construct our party constraints. And therefore, we find um, um, an LHZ layout in which we have now the party qubits or physical qubits um, and only local magnetic fields. So this is one part of our um, mapped Hamiltonian here. And the other part is a constraint part which consists out of the products over all party qubits of each of these plaquettes. So we have um, these triangle plaquettes here. These are local three-body interactions now, and the four-body uh, local interactions are the squares. And each of the plaquettes has a weight as a constraint strength um, C, which um, ensures during the computation process that we always conserve this one here for an even product of logical qubits. And adding the local fields, meaning here in this example that we need now 15 party constraints and we can simply add them as an extra row. So we get here the extra six uh, physical qubits for us with the five additional uh, party constraints. Now we can ask the question, what about sparse connected graphs? So for this example, um, 
we get some qubits here in gray, which has zero magnetic field, um, and in principle, they are not needed. And this is why we introduce the party encoding. We want to have a more compact um, encoding here. And we see that we need for this simple example here only four party qubits. And by having a look on all closed loop, of our logical graph, we see we have in total five and we pick out four of them in such a way that we can construct a compact um, party encoding now only with party um, qubits and only four body and three body local interactions. Now we come to the optimization problem with hard constraints and uh, we focus here on uh, equality constraints of the kind that all coefficient, coefficients here, J, uh, uh, G, are only zero or one and we leave out inequality constraints which can be mapped on a set of multiple overlapping equality constraints but with coefficients uh, different from zero and one. Um, there are already methods for um, constraint optimization problems and the most common and traditional method is the penalty method for sure and it can encode all of these um, equality constraints and um, this by adding an, to the cost function the square over the equality constraint with an extra term in front alpha of it which leads to extra additional k-body interaction which for a sparse connected model is not so good and in the worst case we get an all to all connected again and additionally we get these large energy scale by alpha here which can be very large for some problems. There was one approach, the optimization based approach which can solve single sum, a sum or a single logical qubits here as a quality constraints and it was adjusted and optimized only for the camera graph and the D-wave systems. And there was a constraint quantum annealing approach which also consider only sums of a single logical qubits. And um, they use a new driver Hamiltonian, so an exchange term which acts only on neighbored logical qubits here. And therefore the experimental engineering was a bit unclear, so not full clear. And um, now I present the constraint party quantum annealing approach. So um, we have here a sum over products of qubits. So this means we have here polynomial equality constraints and we combine the party encoding with the constraint quantum annealing approach idea um, to get a more experimental feasible um, uh, encoding and moreover it's platform independent and we have only local interactions and we are always able to neighbor the constraints qubits and um, we can solve therefore constraints with polynomial type of logical qubits. And in the following I will present how we do this combination. Uh, therefore let me give a short overview. We are able to encode now k-body um, problem Hamiltonians together with polynomial constraints and these polynomial constraints become sums of a single physical qubits which can be laid out neighbored always. Um, and this makes us possible to combine it with the constraint quantum annealing approach. And for this example here with the two and three body interactions and um, local fields and um, the polynomial constraints here, we get, for example, um, after the parity and transformation um, to non-overlapping um, sum constraints, uh, which ha uh, have qubits which can be laid out neighbored in the encoding here. And um, this question of neighboring, yes, we are able to lay out um, qubits neighbored, even if they are not neighbored by nature in the party layout. This means we consider this simple example here, where we have these um, closed loops here of the logical graph again, and we have this polynomial constraints with product terms, which are already in the problem example, but uh, they cannot lay out 
uh, simple neighbors. We need ancilla qubits to neighbor them, but with ancilla qubits we are able to neighbor them, and again we can apply exchange terms on it. And uh, this has the disadvantage, of course, that we have to introduce additional qubits and additional couplings for the new party constraints here. Um, now I will come to the simple annealing example to explain how it works now for the computation with quantum annealers. And um, therefore I consider here again the simple logical graph with these uh, hard constraints which has product terms which are already present in the optimization problem and can be layout neighbored without any ancilla qubits. And on this constraint qubit, I uh, apply an exchange Hamiltonian now, which acts only on these constraint qubits, and we have additionally the X driver with X as single spin flips only on the unconstrained qubits here. And we will initialize our system in a classical state which fulfills our constraints already. This means we need an initial Hamiltonian which encodes all the constraint qubits here in a way that the constraint can be fulfilled and the rest can be chosen randomly such that the ground state of the initial Hamiltonian is for sure a state which fulfills our um, constraint here. And our um, Hamilton dynamics, so the annealing protocol uh, can look like this. We have here S, which is uh, driven from zero to one again, and we drive the initial Hamiltonian with a function one minus S squared. And um, the problem Hamiltonian here encoded and the party encoding is driven linear by um, S and then we have the single spin flip driver which acts only on unconstrained and the exchange which acts only on constrained qubit and this is driven by switching it on and off during the annealing which a bit reminds on uh, reverse annealing. And um, in the end, these are two examples of um, our results, what we get. So what you see here are two uh, energy spectra for two different examples with the same problem uh, example here, but with different constraint qubits and different constraints here in yellow. And um, the first example so presents the case where the ground state of the optimization problem already fulfills our constraint and the second is an example for the case where the ground state is not the fulfilling state, but uh, a higher excited state is a low sliding state which fulfills our constraints here. And moreover, um, here are colored lines and gray lines. The colored lines represent uh, the energies corresponding to instantaneous eigenstates which fulfill our constraint and the gray on all eigenstates which do not fulfill our, um, I, our constraint. And um, this is because our, um, our uh, annealing here um, is, has some restricted ev evolution. So the evolution of our annealing process is restricted to the sub subspace of eigenstates which fulfill uh, all the constraints and the rest. So we reach an open and superposition during the annealing process of all eigenstates which fulfill the constraint, but not more and not less. And um, finally, I mentioned that um, the final adiabatic running time now is not any longer given by the minimal gap of the full energy spectrum, but more given by the gap between the lowest lying states, eigenstates of the optimization problem which fulfill the constraint. Moreover, we showed, so more or less the research work by Kilian Ender showed that um, we are also able to encode it for digital quantum computer with a quantum approximate optimization algorithm. And um, yeah, now I will shortly summarize. Now we have shown that we are able to encode logical uh, optimization problems with polynomial constraints 
into some constraints which can be laid out always as neighbored qubits in the party encoding together with the optimization problem. And with the here presented annealing scheme, we are able to evolve the system restricted to the subspace of constraint fulfilling eigenstates. Um, in the end, I want to thank for the collaboration. First of all, this work was done in collaboration with Wolfgang Lechner, the group, uh, the head of our group in Innsbruck and of Party QC, and um, by Kilian Ender and Yunus Javanmat. And I want to thank the whole work group and Party QC for our fruitful discussions for this work and other works. So, thank you. A nice talk. Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, somebody on Zoom, could you please mute your microphone? I, uh, I had to ask a question. Oh, uh, okay, please go ahead. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, I had to ask, uh, how did you actually calculate the speed degeneracy? Again? Could you repeat that? Uh, how do you calculate the de 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 degeneracy? Do you understand? Ah, the degeneracy. Um, yes, if we have a degeneracy in the optimization problem only, um, but not in the constraint optimization problem in place in a role because the constraint problem then is not degeneracy. But if we have a degeneracy in the constraint problem, so we have more eigenstate with the same energy and all fulfill our constraints, um, then we have a bias normally, so a bias on, on um, these uh, degenerated ground states, and we can adjust the bias of the ground states by choosing our uh, party layout, so namely the kind of um, exchange Hamiltonian we act, let act on, so the neighboring of the qubits, and we can adjust the bias additionally by um, changing our party constraint slightly. Okay, uh, thank you for your nice presentation. Uh, could you go back to the slide, so whose title is Simple Quantum Example? You mean this one? Uh, uh, the next ten? The next, the next. Yes, this one. Okay. So in this uh, slide, so you introduce the uh, example of the hard constraint, uh, which is, is a constraint of the so two-body interaction of the so logical qubit. So I was wondering, so how to deal with uh, so one hot, for example, one hot constraint of the logical qubit. So because the one hot example is a one hot constraint is one of the so common example of the so constraint is a, a quantum annealing. What do you mean? This constraint is a so two body interaction constraint. Mm -hmm. So for example, so uh, in this constraint, so sigma two, sigma three plus sigma one, sigma two plus sigma two, sigma six equals to some con const variables. So I was wondering, so for example, so sigma one plus sigma two plus sigma three equal one. Okay, you mean if I have other product terms th then in the problem Hamiltonian? Yes. For first, yeah. and yes, yes, of sure this is a very simple example, but in the paper we will, we will give um, some additional example for, for these cases. And yes, this is possible. You have to pick out these products which are present in the constraint, but not in the problem Hamiltonian, and add them by the parity, con con by the parity transformation to the encoding, and again, lay out the neighbor, and then they are in and they are solvable with the... Thank you. Other questions? Thank you very much for your talk. So, how difficult is it to find all these closed loops when you're doing this encoding? Uh, this is a good question. Do you ask how easy is it to find it always that they are neighbored layout, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, so, for sure, there are some examples. So, for the most of them, 
it is not so hard, but we cannot say what, how hard is for the hardest. And um, so there's even the open questions, how many ancilla qubits I will need to encode every problem the way that I always lay out. And um, yes, for sure, to say it very precise, it's more a kind of future research work. But uh, in the end, with enough qubits and with enough couplings, we are always able to lay out the neighborhood. So it is possible, but I cannot say uh, how much, uh, yeah, it's, it's strongly problem dependent. So for some problems, one will get an advantage for other ones. It could be that there's some disadvantage. The, even for like the simple example here where you have to find these closed loops, even that step, how difficult is that? How we find these closed loops? Yeah, so if question. I had a generic graph, like, is that uh, a problem in this itself? This is already possible, and this is what the work of Party QC do. Uh -huh. So they, they wrote a compiler which is able to find always uh, party encoding for problems. So this compiler does exactly this. Um, does exactly this. We have, they have an algorithm which transforms um, the optimization problem here on the left hand uh -huh. side to the party encoding. Thank you very much. Question in the chat. Access it on your computer, speaker. Like it? Question for you in the chat. Ah, oh, okay. Ah, yes, I can explain it. Could you so, uh, read the question first? Uh, the question is, um, I will uh, repeat the question directly on the slide where I have it. Um, no. Um, I think the question was for, um, for this example here in the end where um, we add the local fields here to the problem. And the question is how we come to the number um, 21 minus 6 plus 0. So as I said, k is the number of parity qubit which we need. In the, this case, we have here uh, 15 interactions in total and six logical qubits, six uh, single local fields. When I add these local fields, gives us additionally six um, physical qubits means that we have 21 physical qubits here. Then we have the six um, original qubits which we have to subtract. And then we have a zero degeneracy because these local fields now break the degeneracy of our problem which we have before. And this is how I came to this formula and we, why we need 15 party constraints. In the okay, one final question. Uh, so if uh, there is no constraint, does this AOHC formalism still work? Uh, is this uh, formalism totally about constraint optimization thing? Um, your question, if, if it works for the constraint optimization or works it also for other problems? Or yeah, like uh, if you remove yeah, yeah. any it's, it's constraint. It, so you can always, any optimization problem which is given in the Ising spin encoding so can be mapped on the um, party encoding and also on the LHZ, um, uh, LHD model. And um, that uh, constraint optimization problems can be mapped as only an extra, so an add-on, so you can say. And we cannot solve, in the moment, not all. We cannot encode all constraint, but only, if I, how I showed, only the ones with equality constraints which are polynomial and have coefficients zero or one. So if uh, there are no constraints, uh, we, what, we can what will the loops be like? There will be all kinds of loops with. Here are no constraints in, in. Or do you mean the parity constraints here? 
do these, these party constraints are only needed to reduce the degrees of freedom here to have a valid map into the party encoding. So these are these plaquettes here. And these plaquettes ensure, I can heuristically say, they ensure that never when I remap it to the original logical problem, one and the same spin can be up and down at the same time. So this would be an invalid solution. And these parity constraints here uh, avoid that, that I get a result which is not. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Further questions, please ask Micah uh, later. And uh, thank, you. thank you. And our next speaker.